Hi, I'm Brandi Ellis from the DA's office. I'm the juvenile prosecutor. I'm here to talk to you today about the diversion program offered through our office. The diversion program is set up for first-time offenders who've never been in trouble before. A youth who has picked up a case will come in, meet with one of our diversion coordinators, and sign a contract to comply with certain conditions. This is a way for our office to provide services as well as for the juvenile to take responsibility for their actions. The juvenile avoids coming into court and going to the court system, and the juvenile avoids an adjudication. Once the adjudication enters, that is something that is not on the and on their record until they can get it. But the vision program is not something you're required to do, and you have the opportunity to opt out. However, if that's what you choose to do, your case will then be charged and the in the court system and will then be handled and carried out in that manner with the court. It's a gift from our office. It's something that's been set up to help juveniles and their families to avoid the circumstances that can come with an accord of litigation. People in the interest of Levi O'Leary. Levi, would you come to the table, please? Is Levi's mother here? Um, after reading the detention report, I am in agreement with a recommendation that's been made for Levi to be released on a PR bond to his mother. They're considering you for diversion. Now, what that means is that if you get on a diversion contract with the district attorney's office, you don't have to come back to court. You don't have to be in detention. You must go to school every class every day, maintain good citizenship, and there will be no unexcused absences or tardies. Let me tell you about the two big problems we have with people who are uh, being screened for diversions. Number one, it's your attitude. And you've got a bad attitude, you're being a punk, well, they won't consider you. So you're going to go in there, you're going to really kiss up, you're going to really do everything and we're talking about being found as a delinquent, to be a delinquent. You want to get this over within a few months and not in a few years. Why don't you just get it done and put it behind you, if you're accepted, okay? All right. Well then, if um, you're accepted for diversion, Miss Ellis will file a motion to dismiss. Any other detention hearings today? Ted appears with Ms. McGirt today. What did you want to do with this case today? Count one states, on or about November 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th and 9th of 2008, Ted Pitt failed to attend school regularly. You're giving up your right to plead not guilty and to set this matter for a hearing to the court. Uh, as far as the sentence goes, it's for open probation. That means that I could put you in detention for up to 45 days as a condition of probation. I could order that you be hospitalized or that you undergo any evaluations or treatment that I think are appropriate. In the future, if you violate this probation, then I could revoke your probation and commit you to the Division of Youth Corrections. Um, if there's anything that you don't want to lose, you can give it to your lawyer so she can hang on to it for you. I've been here before now for almost two years. What's it going to take? Probation revoked before, and we're seeing the same attitude that we have in the past. Uh, he's continually not complying with probation. He's not going to school, and he doesn't take this serious. I think it's time for detention, uh, and I think that would be a wake-up call to Ted for him to see what he's going to be facing if he can't get on board with this probation. We're in agreement with Ms. Ellis at this time. Ted's been here several times. Um, it seems like it's the same issues each time we're back in front of you. Um, Ted won't go to school. Um, we've tried several other alternatives. He won't follow through with them. At this point, I don't know what we can do. Ted's been warned several times by me that if he comes back, he's going to look in at the at long detention sentence. Any other cases, Ms. Ellis? Yeah, yeah, thank you. All right, we're in recess. Hi, I'm Andy England. I'm here to talk to you about what happens if you're sentenced to probation. Once the court sentences you to probation, you, we will meet you up at our front office, schedule an appointment to go over your terms and conditions. Your terms and conditions include staying out of further legal trouble, attending school, 
taking drug screens, two different types of court fines, which can be either $78 or $163, um, a time payment fee of $25. Um, the community service also, you have to pay a fee to complete that. Um, we also take the conditions that the court also throws at you seriously as far as uh, community service, making your appointments, you will report to a probation officer um, every 60 days, every 30 days, every other week or every week depending on your level of supervision. So I would encourage you to take advantage of a diversion contract and not be sentenced to probation.